So, we all know that when it comes to material creation and authorization, understanding how to create bespoke and unique materials is one of the best ways of distinguishing your materials from the rest. And being able to create this on the go without being platform or device dependent is one thing that everybody would like to achieve. And this is what the folks at Architectures are doing. Architectures is an online material based editor and creator for architects and designers and this includes 3D artists. This simply allows you effortlessly create seamless textures, bump maps and hatches with a simple click of a button and by giving you parameters that you can tweak and create the most out of the material you're trying to make. To get started with this, all you need to do is go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can start creating your material. So the first thing which you notice is you have a create button. Meanwhile, if you scroll all the way down, you notice that we have a set of seamless textures that you can download from. So if you're trying to see more stuff, you can simply click on more and see some more stuff. You would also be able to see some recently added materials or textures that you can pick from and start working with those. And if you're looking for things based off categories, you'd notice that there is the brick, concrete, metal, stone, terrazzo, tile, and also wood. You can also search for stuff based off patterns by clicking on the pattern button and you can go through stacks which shows off a, a couple of stack textures. You can also take a look at some Flemishes and if you're looking for cubic textures, you can also select those as well. But then, what if you like to create yours? So to create your own material is really easy. But before we talk about creating your material, if you select on any of these materials that exist right here, you can choose to download the JPEG versions or you can hit the edit button to edit this particular material and tweak it to your liking. But what if you like to create yours from scratch? So what you need to do is go right to the home page and click on the create button. Now with the create page loaded, you have options of playing with the pattern, the material, adjustment, PBR options, and so on. So to get started, you can simply click from the drop down, select the kind of pattern that you want to make. So let's say we'd like to play with some dry stone. If we select the dry stone, we can now go in and set the number of rows that we want. We can actually set this to eight by six and you can see that we have that there. But for this use case, I'm just going to go back and revert this to the default 4x6. If we would also like to play with the material, we can click on the drop down and select the kind of material that we'd like to have, and this would automatically update that. For the width, you can also make some changes. Adjustment deals with the brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation, which are totally up to you, and you can actually make changes to these to give that unique definition to the material that you're making. And for tint, you can also choose to tint this. So let's say we'd like to tint this just a little bit of yellow. We can throw in that tint right there. Let's actually make this tiny, more like a custard version. And we can click on OK, and you can see that. You can, of course, go over to the edge section and make some definitions to the edge. But the edges are something that we probably would not be see from a 2D plane. And that is why we need to scroll all the way back and make some selections from the previewable map types that exist. And if you click on the drop down, you can see the displacement, the normal, the roughness, metalness and so on but for this particular use case we're going to switch to 3d because we'd like to preview this in 3d and see exactly what we're doing as this is going to be the pure representation of what the final image would look like and it just makes sense to take a look at this in this view as we create it we can now go all the way down and we can make some changes to the edges so from this edge section we can switch the style from handmade to rough and you notice that updates we can also go all the way down and play with the fillet and you also notice that this automatically updates. The parameter scale is to scale the parameter of what you're making and we can choose to either increase the profile width or we can exclude certain sides. So to these sides, you can select the sides which you like to exclude and this is also applicable to profile and also the final finish as this actually throws in a final surface overall finish. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to set this back to none and also set this right back to none. So once we have this ready, if you like to play with the tone variation, you can. But because this is going to end up being a PBR material that we're trying to make, we can go over to the PBR options and make some interesting changes by the icons that we have right here, that this simply spells out displacement, bump, roughness, and also metalness. So to all of these parameters, you can make interesting changes and you can update them to suit the kind of material that you're trying to make. If you'd like to throw in an additional set of material, of course you can. So this means that you can mix multiple materials together and create something even more interesting. Of course, we can play with the placement, define a set of rules, or we can simply go over to the random section and use the frequency slider to play with the randomization of our second material. And this isn't limited to one. You can proceed to add more materials if you also choose to do so. And finally, if we go all the way down, you'd notice that we have the joint. Now this joint deals with all of the individual crevices that exist within the material that you're working on. 
So we can select something else, say for example, a rough concrete, and this is going to populate that section. And you notice how this begins to create that interesting organic look. If you like to thin that, you, of course you can. If you also like to play with the horizontal or vertical definitions, you can also proceed to do all of those. Going all the way back, if you're no longer comfortable with this particular pattern, just like we mentioned before, this allows you to make changes and flip this back and forth. So we can select something else and you notice that this automatically adapts to what we have. And we can also proceed to select something else as well. Say for example, the rounded rubble, and this would automatically accommodate for that. You can preview this in both 2D and 3D planes and get the perfect result that you're going for. At this point, I'm just gonna increase the depth just to make sure that we have more depth. And if we are comfortable with this, we can click on the drop down, preview all of the necessary texture type that exists just to confirm that we have exactly what we're looking for. And finally, we can hit the download button and download the texture type that we want. So I would suggest that when downloading, simply download all of the necessary texture type that you need, as you can use this in any DCC app of choice and use this to create some interesting and fantastic seamless material for your next project. And real quick before we go, if you're working with textures and let's say you want to use a custom material, what you can do is you can go over to the material section and you can load up a custom material. You can choose to use a solid fill tint or you can upload yours. So we've already uploaded two previously and if you'd like to upload one more, you can simply click on the upload button, select the texture that you want, automatically this opens, and you can define an area. So in this case, it says select an area, and you can simply select the given area, and you can select even multiple ones, and delete the ones you don't want to keep. So since we've selected this, we can now proceed to click on continue, and this is the grass material that we'll use. So once we click on that, automatically, you notice that that replaces what we had previously. So you can also play with this with any other kind of pattern that exists. And this is super cool for those who are thinking about using custom materials to create their own patterns. Of course, this is going to be very handy. And for anyone who's thinking about exploring this, links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. So this is it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I see you guys in the next one. Peace.